to share with you the 23rd Psalm. We all are familiar with it. It's probably been used for more occasions than any other particular scripture. But it's been used probably most in settings like this. The Psalmist David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside the still waters. 
He restores my soul. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever forever so much can be said about that passage of scripture and I'm not going to preach but I heard this past Sunday was a week ago I heard a sermon from this passage that probably was the best expository presentation word by word of this entire setting. And it took my mind to the fact of what I've said so many times. David knew what he was talking about. He knew the Lord. The Lord, not just any. The Lord is my shepherd. Because of all of these things the Lord, his shepherd, does for him, he knows that he will dwell in his house forever. 22 years ago, though it might feel like only yesterday, a beautiful little baby boy was born and introduced to this planet of the parents of Scott and Dolores Hare. When you first gazed at him, you marveled at his perfection, and you truly felt blessed. In him, you saw infinite potential, and you placed great hope in him. With you, he uttered his first words. With you, he took his first steps. You rejoiced in his victories, and you cried in his losses and sorrows. You guided him, you nurtured him, you educated him, you loved him, you taught him excellent core values of life. You gave him all that you had to give. You modeled Christ-likeness before him and you led him at an early age to give his heart and life to Jesus Christ and to love him with his whole heart and to serve him with everything that he had. You taught him how to grow up strong so that he could make independent choices that were wise, capable of great love. He had respect for others and you taught him how to be a witness to others and you taught him that by the way you lived. And it's already been said that from early childhood, he never met a stranger. I've heard it this whole, ever since I've been to the family, I've heard him talk of how Nolan never met a stranger. The other day I heard uh, someone say that he would talk to anybody, anywhere, any place, any time, about anything. He just met no stranger. He's a gift to us from God. What a gift his life has been to us. Actually, he had a gift of winning friends and influencing people. And the fact of the matter is, everyone here was impacted in some way or another by Nolan, and you had an impact on him. The Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from God, not just to his family, but to everybody that knew him, his classmates, his teammates, his coaches, uh, and, and uh, the girls. Everybody loved him, even little children like his cousins, Stella. 
pretty little sweetheart right there, Jade. He loved that little girl. He loved Stella. And they loved him. They loved to be with him. And now here we are today in this beautiful, serene setting under these large trees, hearing the sounds of nature, wind blowing through the leaves, birds chirping. I believe that this is exactly where Nolan would love to be, hearing those same sounds that we hear. But then today we ask the question, why? Why at such an early age, with such a long future ahead of him, would he leave us this early? But one thing I've learned in life, and I've lived it a long time, there are far more why questions than there are answers. The why that we would ask today, why would he be taken? But we have to remember something. God said it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. We've all, all of us, are going to have to face that fateful appointment one day, but no one knows when it will be. But even knowing that, the why question does not go away. So let me remind you again of God's word to all of us. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Again, he said, God knows the beginning from the end. And the most common why question for every human. Why did God take him or her or whomever? Why did God let this happen? Why did God do this? Those are the kinds of questions humanity will ask. But in that vast future out there is the unknown. None of us know that future. But because God knew us before he formed us in our mother's womb, he knew what was ahead out there for us. But just because he knows the future and knows what's out there ahead for us does not mean that he predestines us at a specific moment that we're going to leave this place. He, in his sovereignty, just knows that it's going to happen. And that's why he promised us to be a very present help in time of need. Because in God's infinite knowledge, he knew that in hours just like this, we would need him more than any other time. And here we stand with all that vast future ahead of us. We don't understand it. But life is life. But in the midst of it, there is God. Bigger than life, stronger than problems, with a never exhausting great love for all of us, his creation, to the family, and I'm in it, to us, to all the family of Nolan's friends. As difficult as it is today, remember that Nolan now has a future ahead of him for which we all long to inherit. And one day we will. One day we will meet him. So, Scott, 
Dolores, Megan, Tommy, Peggy, Miss Blair, Randall, Miss Brenda, the rest of the family and all of the friends. At this place, we have all walked life's journey with Nolan as far as we can walk and as far as we can go with him. But we're not saying goodbye to Nolan today. We're just saying we're going to see you on the other side. He just stepped over before we did. Like he was in so much of his life activities, he was a jump ahead of everybody else. And he's a step ahead of us, but we shall join him. At the church, Pastor Brad made a statement that regardless of the season, duck season, deer season, fishing season, whatever season it was, Pastor Brad reminded us that Nolan was always prepared. And even in the season of death, Nolan was prepared. Three weeks ago, my wife and I were here and over at Tommy's house, he's got this little scooter and he was riding Brenda on it and then Nolan said he was gonna ride her on it. And she said, oh, I don't know. I don't wanna ride. I don't know to ride. I, we may fall, we might get hurt. Nolan said, doesn't matter to me. I know where I'm going. I'm safe. And it wasn't but just a little bit. I looked up and there came Brenda riding that scooter by herself down the street. Got over that fear real quick. Nolan was prepared. And I would say to this to all of us today in closing, Paul said to us, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. This I don't like to call this a casket, though we know it is. I don't like to call this earthen house a grave. I like to call it Nolan's new apartment. Because he's not going to live in it long. Because when the Lord comes back, he's coming out of there before our feet leave the ground. And he'll be transformed and have a new body before we will. I remember a funeral that I conducted over in eastern part of Georgia. And the funeral director closed the lid right after the viewing. And he turned a knob and said, now it is sealed. Nothing can get in and nothing can get out. In my mind, I said immediately, you don't know the person that's in. Regardless of that seal, he's coming out. No matter how well this is sealed, on the resurrection morning, this will open. And the spirit that God brings with him, the spirit of Nolan that's coming back, we're going to meet him in the air to meet the Lord in the air. Did you hear me? Come cloud side. There will be. We'll see him. And then we'll meet the Lord in the with the uh, angels leading him. The dead in Christ will ride first, rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord.
Nolan already is experiencing what we're longing for. And Paul concluded that by saying, comfort one another with these words. He began it saying, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning those who sleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. We know wherein our hope rests and it's in Christ to our family I share your sorrow the hurt the loss the pain but we know the one who stills the waters and calms the waves will also settle the storms in our life would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Father God, I thank you today for giving us the gift of Nolan Hare. You gave him to us to enjoy for 22 years. Now he's with you. We have wonderful memories that are treasures. And we have a blessed hope within us that we will see him and we may see him a lot sooner than any of us can imagine. I ask you now to touch every member of this family, every friend, every person that fished with him, hunted with him, rode bikes with him, enjoyed fellowship with him, I ask you to be their comfort and their strength and let them, if they have not already, find their hope in Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. family's wishes that we sing Amazing Grace today, all in concert together. Um, so we just ask that you just sing along with us, everybody aloud. Amazing <coughs> Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
pretty good, yeah. Just trucking along. I think I'm gonna drop that in there. Pull over here, just drop that down over here. So this is over. Yeah.